he unless he gets fired, they can fire you, but firing a director is difficult and it's messy and nobody likes doing it. So right. they just move shit around. They just move the venue. Yeah, that's it. They just move and don't tell you where they're going. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So I, I eventually found out. I, I called the editor. The new editor was a guy named George Folsey who was used to run, I think, Universal Pictures. He was a big producer. He made... Um, what was the guy who made uh, Blues Brothers? That director, uh, John Land- Landis. Landis. John Landis and he made movies together, and he edited all of John Landis's movies, including the Blues Brothers and all these great comedies. Right. So uh, he took over the editing, and I called him, and he, I was really angry that he was editing without me. And then at one point he said, "Listen, I, this is reality. They gave me the movie to edit. Um, what are you gonna, you know? Let me work on it for a couple weeks with their concerns in mind, and then." Uh, you can come in and we'll talk about um, and you can look at it. But I'm not hurting your movie. Just you know, he was a really great guy. So we did an edit with me and him together. And he was hurting your movie. No, he wasn't. He actually ended up. He was hired to get it away from my vision, but he ended up liking the way I wanted to make the movie. I I, I converted him, and we did a cut together, which probably got him in some trouble. I I, pre, I like he's a guy I'll never I'll never forget because he did that for me. So why is it so hard to fire a director? Is it just all union it's stuff? Just nobody likes. You know, a part of it is that these a whole lot of the executives in Hollywood are just fucking pussies. Yes. They don't want to have the moment. I wouldn't mind if I felt like somebody was fucking up a thing that, I, and I don't believe that you shouldn't fire a director. Right. I signed when I made that movie. I signed a reg- regular uh, studio contract that says I serve at their pleasure and they can replace me on a day's notice. I knew that, so I can't say they took my movie away. They hired me to work on a movie that I happen to have written. And that I care a lot about, but I got thrown off because I wasn't doing what they wanted. That's the way it works. But well, they didn't have the they didn't have the balls to do it. The one point I went to the they hired another editor, and then I they flew me out there first class, put me up in a beautiful hotel, and I went to the editor. They and the producer on the movie at the time um, invited me to the editing room to watch the reels. You know, movies are cut up into like right. five reels. So I would watch real one, and then he'd go, thanks for coming. And i go, well, I have some suggestions. And he'd go, no, we can't take your suggestions. This is already in the works. Oh. And I'd go, well, what do you, when how, what's my input here? And he says, if you have suggestions, you can email them to me later. And I said, but you already locked the reel. And he goes, yeah. So what's the, what will be done with my suggestions? And he said, nothing. He said this to me. And I said, so you're not letting me work on the movie. And he goes, go back to your hotel and email me. Like he just, he, he flew me out there. And put me up um, just to 3,000 miles just to get fucked and uh, not be allowed to work on the movie. That's something I won't forget either because that was like a, a like a chess move on his part. Like I couldn't say he didn't invite me. He sure did invite me. Sure. He's got the receipts to prove it. Right, right. I flew him out of your first class. Um, he, when did he put him up in the best hotel in town and all he did was come to the editing room and cause problems. So I had to I, I had to restrict his access, and that's the story he told people, which is not true. So um, and he basically just said, "Go back. And, I'm, we're here talking, but go back and email me." Yeah, go. But you know, you're, I'm, you're not. You can't sit in the editing room and make suggestions because we're too late in the process. We're locking the reels now. What does that mean, locking the reels? It means that it's picture locked, which means you can't change any frames. That you've you've started to print the film. So he said, "Go back to your hotel room and write write me emails." And I said, "What'll well, be done with them? Nothing, because the reels are already locked." It was like it was just so insulting. And when he did that, I I had the reaction that he programmed that he expected, which was, "I gotta get out of this. this. is too personally painful." I mean, I had been working on this. I directed this movie. I, I was such a emotional thing for me. It was a year that I'd been working on it. And so he knew that if he did that to me, it wouldn't be an outright firing or grievance that he could right. that could be brought against him. But he knew he would break my spirit, which he did. It, it made me. I sat in the parking lot. I called my wife at the time, and I told her the story. And she said, "I think it's it's time to let this go." What would have been a strategic, like as in a ch- say in a chess move, if you weren't as emotionally attached to it? What would have been a way that you look back on it? Like, okay, I could have actually done this to counter. Well, I wouldn't that. have made the trip out. I wouldn't have made the trip out. I would have said I'm not going out there till I, you know, I want the editing room back here or something. You can't fight those guys. They own the movie. Sure, sure. So, I mean, I did, I, you know, I had a meeting with an, a, re, a big director at the time who t- told me some things that you can do. For one thing he said is when they take the movie away from you, it's inevitable. It happens to almost every movie. Right. That the director loses control during the editing. But the thing you can count on is that the studios don't have any better ideas than you do. Um, and they don't really want to edit. They don't enjoy the work. You know, you, it's your idea. You have the creativity right. and you like it. They don't like it, and they don't know how to do it. 
So they'll just to be protective and, uh, you know, territorial, they'll take it away from you. Let them take it. Don't fight it. It's like if a dog is biting you, they tell you don't pull your hand away because you'll actually tear your hand right. on the teeth. What you do is you push your hand further into the dog's mouth. I've never heard that before. Yeah, wow. because then you're not, you're not tug tugging on the teeth that are in your skin causes tears instead of just a puncture. But if you push your hand into the dog's mouth, it'll actually have to open its mouth wider. So you wow. push your hand in, like punching the dog in the face while it's, uh, you know. The ball's uh, on the first guy to discover that. <laughs> <laughs> to have the, to the fucking low heart rate enough to do that. But uh, you have to do that in those moments of stress. You have to go, I'm not going to tug and j right. jerk back. I'm going to either push in towards the trouble or I'm going to just keep calm and let it bite me and just and just take it. And that's the best way. They say, we want the film. And you go, okay. Here's the reels. Here's my notes. Go ahead. Because what's going to happen is they're going to give it to some young executive for two weeks. He's going to do an edit, and he's going to get all excited and show it to the exact to the big guys. And they're going to go, "What the fuck did you do? This movie's worse now." Yeah. Give it back to the director, and then the, that executive will actually come to you. Please help me. <laughs> Please, you know, he he foresaw that, and there was a version of that that happened. They did reshoots on Pootie Tang, and they asked me to direct the reshoots. Oh wow! Because they didn't know another way to go. I had made something that was pretty unique, and nobody knew how to handle it. So, is it embarrassing at all? Like, because again, as as comics, we kind of get used to. Like you said you're used to bombing. We get used to. Yeah. But is it embarrassing when, like, you know the whole cast sees a certain thing, and, mm -hmm. and you're like, you know, they've taken it from you? Do you feel like, ugh, like I don't want to face those people, or do you? Yeah, feel there's like a lot of hu humiliation in it. I mean, when I did Pudi Tang. Uh, by the time it was finished, I was disgusted with the whole thing, and I was also a pariah, like I was not hireable as a director. It ruined my filmmaking career. A good example of that is, is I haven't been hired for, as a director since then. Um, I directed one movie that's not a good record. It's better to do, do two. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. Um, the year 2000, I made Pootie Tang. It's 2011. I've never directed again. But what that's how much it hurt me. But at the time, when it was coming out, I remember... It was so humiliating. It was so hard. The pressure was so much because something was out there that I didn't like. I got an email on my website back when we had, like, community boards on our websites. Yeah. You know, somebody wrote me yeah, and yeah. said, do you like, should I go see Pootie Tang? It was coming out in a few days. And I wrote back and I said, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Because in truth, I hadn't right, seen right, it. Right, right, right. So that was my response. I haven't seen it. Somebody at Paramount who was trolling my website saw this and they got scared by that. That they had over breached, they had taken me taken too much advantage. <laughs> so they got worried. I think of the DGA, the Directors Guild. So they wrote me and said, "Please come watch the movie." And they gave me another first class ticket to come out and gave me a screening room at Paramount to watch the movie. And I flew out there um, and went to a screening room, and nobody like it was weird. Nobody was around. It's like they cleared the yeah. streets, the the hallways at Paramount, so nobody would have to talk to me. And I sat, because John Goldwyn, who ran Paramount, hated me. He hated the movie. He hated me. He was he was royally angry at the movie. Um, but anyway, so I sat in the theater and I watched it, and it made me sick. I just he hated, just hated what you saw. Hated it. Hated what they did with it. And uh, knew it was coming out that day. It was, that was opening day. And um, I remember David Gale, who ran MTV Films. I think he still does. Yeah. They were partly involved. He's the only guy. He in front, like, just walked over and shook my hand and said, I'm glad to see you. He was the only guy who pretended to be my friend in the past who kept pretending to be my friend, or was. I really liked that guy. And he and he gave me, he brought me a review from Elvis Mitchell, who was writing for the New York Times at the time. He, he found one review from him, and he loved the movie. Oh, wow. So I got to experience for five minutes... Before I saw the film, before I saw it, the, his review, and I was really happy for five minutes about it. Then I watched it, yeah. and I was like, this is shit. And then all the reviews started coming out. Hateful, hateful, piles and piles of hateful reviews. And then, you know, uh, Rope, what's his name? E Ebert. Rod uh, yeah, Cisco Ebert, yeah. Roger. Roger Ebert, who I grew up watching on sneak previews on PBS until uh, before it was even a big show. Um, said this movie's not even bad. It's not complete. It's not a movie. Like he didn't even give it the respect to pan it. He said, "I can't review this movie. It's not. It's not a film." 
and he was right. He actually said something really smart, which was he said, it looks like people took pieces of a movie someone else made and manufactured this strange product out of it. And that's exactly what they had done. They took my movie that I had made and they put it together. But anyway, so so it was hard to have a movie out that was getting panned with my name on it. I had the option to take my name off of it, but I didn't because I, I felt it was my responsibility right. that it was bad. It's part of your job as a director. Of Louis C.K.